I've been manipulating you this whole time, and you didn't even know it. <laughs> okay, maybe not. How will you ever know, though? All right, in all seriousness, Shane Dawson's series on the inside the mind of Jake Paul and talking about sociopaths and the traits of sociopaths and the definition and everything, it got me thinking... And I've thought about this before, but I really wanted to explore this. Like, what about my past and things that have happened with me? I know we're not really supposed to self-diagnose, and I have no intention to self-diagnose myself here, but I have had a lot of interesting experiences. I've had a lot of crappy behavior, and I just thought it would be interesting to talk about that, and maybe it'll color some of why I talk about the things that I do and why I look at things the way that I do. I don't know. Let's do it. So for some context, we're going to be talking about antisocial personality disorder, also known as sociopathy, but antisocial personality disorder is the official diagnosis you would be given if you went in to see a licensed professional. And I... I don't know what well, we're going to see. I'm going to go over the criteria and I'll discuss how it kind of fits into all these little different things that have happened in my life and why I've questioned it before. This is the DSM. And though I normally like the trait based way of looking at personality disorders, I'm going to be going with the traditional way that you would get if you were like going to see a professional for antisocial personality disorder. I'm just gonna give a brief summary here of what the diagnosis is. I'm not gonna be perfect about it. You can figure out for yourself what is true and what is not. But generally, this is happening since age 15 and beyond. You have to have had conduct disorder from before age 15. A lot of what I'm gonna be talking about in my life happened both before 15 and after 15. It can't be that these things have happened exclusively during schizophrenia or bipolar disorder. You can't be diagnosed before the age of 18, and you have to have three or more of the following I'm just going to summarize. So a failure to obey the law, basically do things that could get you arrested. Repeated lying and deceitfulness. Impulsivity, failure to plan ahead. Irritability, aggressiveness, maybe physical fights. Um, a reckless disregard for the safety of yourself or other people, irresponsibility, like not keeping up with your financial obligations, for example, and a lack of remorse, just generally like not caring about the things that you do. So three out of those is all you really need with the other stuff I mentioned. Now, before I get into this, I have to say I am probably going to be like smiling and laughing throughout it. It's just the way that I cope with things. I tend to, when I discuss serious and heavy issues, try to make light of them, even though this is not light and the things that I've done, I do feel bad about. Um, a lot of them are in the past, so I don't feel so viscerally bad right now, but I have definitely had periods where I was crying my eyes out um, in remorse for the things that I've done, so I don't want it to seem like I'm not remorseful now. I do not think any of these behaviors are good behaviors. And you are fully allowed to make your own judgments about me from the things that I've done. I am totally accepting of that. If you feel like I'm not somebody you can trust after hearing all of this, that's okay. So I'm going to be reading off of a list that I have on my phone here that I jotted down. It's kind of like random and out of order, and it doesn't necessarily make any sense, but I just wanted to get all my thoughts out and make a video really quickly. So the first thing that really sticks out to me when I think of if I could possibly be a sociopath was there was a day in middle school, so basically age like 12, 13, I don't remember exactly what the age was, but I remember very specifically I was in a shop class. I remember being in class and I just, its it was almost like a switch went off, which is kind of interesting because in the documentary on the mind of Jake Paul that Shane was doing when he was discussing this with Katie Morton, she had said something about it. it's kind of like there's this empathy switch and it's just turned off. And I remember being in class and feeling like, you know what? Fuck it. I'm done. I don't care about anybody else anymore. I just don't give a damn about anything. I do not care. And from that point on, I felt like my personality changed and it felt like a switch went off. That's exactly how I would describe it. All right, so jumping around, around my teenage years, I had a period where I was stealing things. I wouldn't say a lot, but I definitely have some memories. For example, I remember going into like a small mom and pop shop and a town and stealing a small figurine. 
and I stole actually I have it right here on Halloween night I stole something off of somebody's porch which was this a candy apple um, I remember stealing from a store a couple of things like just pocketing them just because I wanted to because I could and I thought it was kind of cool I guess and exciting I don't know again I didn't really care um, I've also stolen money from my mom many times. I also stole cigarettes from her. So I noticed that one of the things that they mentioned in the DSM when you like read further was that speeding and reckless behavior like kind of going together with antisocial personality disorder and I definitely used to speed a lot. Um, not like normal speeding like everybody goes over the speed limit like I would go like way over the speed limit like go around curves like to the point where it was definitely dangerous to be doing this. So I used to be in the car with a friend and I used to try to like impress them or something by driving recklessly or like honking the horn a bunch of times or like shaking the car around driving on the other side of the road like all that kind of stuff. Okay something else that I've done that you know it's not I guess like a huge deal maybe it is I don't know but it is breaking the law. I used to trespass on abandoned buildings. I used to go into places where I definitely should not have been where I knew that there was security around and there would be cops sometimes around and I would just go in there anyway because I wanted to. All right, another time when I think I was in my early 20s, I was with somebody that I liked kind of and I was, I don't know, we went into another dollar store. I don't know why I was in dollar stores all the time, but this was like a big one where they had all kinds of different stuff. Like you could do your shopping there basically. And we went through the store and both of us just kind of like knocked everything on the floor. Like we just walked down the aisles knocking stuff on the floor. Like it didn't matter if it was a bottle with liquid in it or if it was like a heavy thing or whatever. I wouldn't say that we broke anything like glass or anything because that I don't know but we did we just like knocked stuff on the floor didn't care and walked out didn't buy anything like whatever. Another time I was in high school and my friends and I used to like walk up and down the street because we would be bored or we would just out and like hanging out and that's how we got together we walked down the street and there was like one of those rubber ball things that like kids play with and I would take it and I would throw it in front of passing cars like so they had no time to react at all. I would just roll it out in front of the car like constantly like I kept doing this over and over and over again and I got a kick out of it. I thought it was hilarious because they would honk the horn, they would screech their brakes and I don't know for me that was like the funniest thing and it, because I was surprising them or something or maybe I felt like I had control over the situation so that's what another example of something that you could say was antisocial. Another time I was in high school and there was somebody who was constantly bothering me. I don't know what her deal was. She just hated me for whatever reason. She just always picked on me. My friends and I we used to eat in a stairwell that was kind of like in the back corner of the school um, but it was a big stairwell and she came in one day and she was bothering us and she's specifically bothering me and she decided to dump glitter on my head. So I got irate, you know, talk about irritability. I was always irritable in high school to begin with and then I was just like really pissed off. So I got up and I started pushing her as hard as I could towards the stairs, basically with the intention to get her to fall down the stairs. I didn't really care what happened to her at that point. I just wanted her down the stairs and I fully knew because there was enough of a delay because she was a larger girl and it was hard to push her. I knew what I was doing and I knew what could potentially happen and I just didn't care. I just wanted to see her go down the stairs. She didn't go down. And speaking of that irritability that I generally had in high school, I always had nasty remarks to say to people. There was always sarcastic, like nasty stuff going through my head. I do remember having like violent fantasies about hurting people. Um, not on the level of maybe what we see today, but it was like fantastical, like murderous stuff. Um, but I also remember that I had a friend who used to bother me and I would take my pen or my pencil and just like stab her in the arm. And that was something that I've done before to other people. So again, we're discussing bad behaviors, could be antisocial, disregard for the safety of others, disregard for my own safety, like irritability, it's all there. Related to the attacking of the girl on the stairs when I had the boyfriend, the second to last boyfriend, I've only had two boyfriends but like the big serious one that was a long time ago at 2009 was when we really broke it off that last day. Well we used to get in fights all the time so you know one of the things they mention is fighting, getting into aggressive behavior, all that kind of stuff. I was just so furious at him that I went after him with a tool that a mechanic had left in my trunk, like just 
weird, this weird like sharp tool. Um, I do have the tool, I'm not gonna get it down, but I do have it. And I like lunged at him with this tool and I was like, I just, I didn't care. I was ready to kill him. I was ready to stab him right in his heart and kill him. Um, so I know that I have that capacity in me. I always say to people, if I ever had to kill somebody, I know I could do it because I was willing to do it to him. Um, he defended himself and we tussled a little bit more and he got out the door and that was the end of that relationship and that was actually a turning point for me where I realized like I need to change something because it's not okay that I get to the point that I'm gonna kill somebody. But again, all behavior that you would see in somebody with antisocial traits. I also saw that in the DSM they talked about financial irresponsibility and like just like not doing not keeping up with your work responsibilities and stuff. And I would never really say that I wasn't responsible at work, although there was one job that that's a little bit questionable. But I've definitely gone into debt, like tons and tons of debt. Um, I did have the desire to repay it though, which I think would distinguish me from somebody who's antisocial who just wouldn't care at all. But I've definitely been financially irresponsible and gotten into debt. And there has been a period of my life recently, which I've talked about, with my ex where I just wasn't working and I didn't really have intentions to work. I had intentions to do something, but I wasn't working. Oh yeah, and then there was the time in college that I forget about. Um, Cause college was just a weird time for me, but there was the time that the campus police got called on me because I had gotten angry. Talk about irritability again. I had been really angry um, at my roommate and his friend. They had been using my chair. <laughs> I laugh now because it's so insignificant, but it mattered to me, I guess, at the time. Um, they continued using my chair without asking permission, so I got really pissed off one day, and I went down to the campus store, and I bought tacks, um, like thumbtacks, like you push into the wall, and some poster glue or whatever and I spelled out fuck you on my chair in tax and I also printed out something very vulgar that I don't even want to repeat here about get your filthy off of my chair woman's body part let's put it that way and put it in the front of our door to the entrance to our room so I had come home from class I guess one day and uh, I don't remember exactly what happened. I just remember I had my VA or DA or whatever the hell they called them at the time. I had to go see the person who was in charge of the hallway that I lived in, basically. So, you know, campus police were called. That's criminal activity. Another thing that just I've generally done for a long time, and I would say that you could still say that I do this, and I fully admit to it, um, though I don't think I do it as hardcore as maybe I used to, is that I just gather information on people. And Katie actually talked about this with Shane in the video that they did talking about sociopaths, about how they'll keep a file on people, or they'll like always trying to read people and figure people out so they know their weak points. And I wouldn't say that I was looking for weak points necessarily, but I definitely do my digging when I meet people and I don't tell them about it usually. Um, although I've been much more transparent recently, but I will go, you know, I've always, ever since the internet came out, I've always been somebody who's like trying to figure out, okay, where do they live? Where do they work? Who do they talk to? What do they do? What do they think about things? And I'm like, that's just always in my mind. So if that's a pattern that people with antisocial personality disorder do, then you could peg me as one. So speaking of the beginning of the internet, early on when we used to use Yahoo Chat to talk, I don't know how many people are going to remember this, but you used to have to use Yahoo Chat to have any kind of like a chat room conversation with somebody. So back in those days, I used to be in some um, like basically just gay rooms, I think. I think it was gay. I don't know if it was like gay, bi, lesbian. I don't remember what we called stuff back then, but I was in those rooms kind of like chatting and trying to like understand myself and understand like what this even is. And sometimes guys would try to hit on me and they would send a picture. And I remember one particular guy, I don't remember what he looks like. I don't really remember the details. I just remember he sent me a picture and this is kind of emblematic of my attitude at that time in general. 
He sent me a picture of himself and I basically told him you are disgusting for even thinking that you could possibly get with somebody like me. I can't, I'm sorry if this is triggering to anybody, you may want to turn this off at this point, but this was the type of person that I was. I was just like, you're disgusting, you're fat, you're ugly, and I cannot believe that you would even think that you could get with somebody like me, that I would even want to talk to you. Like, that was the kind of thing that I actually said, that I typed into the chat box. Um, but it was also stuff that was regularly going through my mind about people, so... And kind of related to that, I had a supervisor years and years and years and years later in my mid-twenties, I believe, um, who I didn't like and she didn't like me and this I don't think that was a surprise to anybody, but there was an email chain going around and I don't remember who started it, if it was me or somebody else, but in our department there was like a little email chain going around. It was basically making fun of her weight and I participated in that and she eventually got wind of it um, and I never even felt any remorse, you know, I never, f I do now, I do now, but back then it was like, you know what, she deserved it. And I used to feel that way about a lot of the things that I did. It was always like, well, that person's stupid, so they deserve what I did to them, or that they're an idiot, you know, they're, screw them, F them, I don't care what I did to them, I don't like them, why do I care? Like, that was the general feeling about things, so that lack of remorse was definitely there. Or in the case of that guy that messaged me that I said, like, you're disgusting and you're ugly, I would just be like, well, he is disgusting. He is ugly. He deserves to be told that. And so that was, like, the rationalization for me. Like, they're getting what they deserve. Something else that I saw in the DSM was that they mentioned that they may have multiple sex partners, and I have actually counted it, and I have a list, which is kind of weird, but I did this for a study that's being done. I'm not like some weird person who counts their sex partners, but I did find it an interesting exercise to try one time. Uh, and I do have a list and I looked at it before I did this and I believe it's around 28 people. Um, not always full on sex. Like it really matters though. I've been sexual with 28 different people in my life. So I don't know. Is that, is that enough? to be antisocial, you can be the judge of that, but it's just another thing I'm throwing into the mix here to consider. Okay, and now the last one is something that happened when I was, I would say very young. I would say like seven to 11-ish years old, around that time. Um, I haven't really told many people. If, if I told anybody, it was maybe one person. I don't really know who, to be honest. I just remember maybe I've told somebody this, but this is something I'm definitely not proud of. Um, I don't know what else to say about that, but I'm, I'm, I'm trying to keep things light because I don't like to go into that heavy, dark place, but it was, I, it's not something that I would ever want to hold up as a good thing for obvious reasons, but I used to have pets, not all at the same time, but I used to have pets and I would hurt them. Now, just not not to justify it, but to clarify, I'm not talking about, like, torture. Like, I, I wasn't setting anything on fire. I wasn't using... I don't know. I don't want to qualify it too much, because I was hurting them. I was hurting them. Um, and for those that don't know, I went vegetarian at age 12. I went vegan 10 years later. So I've had... 23 years of vegetarianism in my life, so I'm not that person. Again, I was a kid. I don't know that that justifies it, but we've heard a lot about with antisocial personality disorder, with sociopaths and psychopaths and whatever, however, whatever label you want to put on it, we've heard a lot about how they hurt animals when they're children. Like, that's a telltale sign. That's actually one of the criteria, I believe, for conduct disorder, which is the prerequisite that's required to have antisocial personality disorder. So that's my list. It's probably not everything, but it was the most that I could come up with right now. And I think it pretty well gives a picture of some of my past. It's not the entire past, and let me get to that. So after reading the criteria and hearing of all these experiences, I don't think it would be a far cry for anybody to be like, you know what, it sounds like you might be a little bit of a sociopath, and it was something that I've questioned before. However, I have always believed, and again, I can't self-diagnose here, which frustrates me, I kind of wish I could, but 
I have always been somebody who has believed that I had borderline personality disorder. And I want to actually do another video on why I think that. Um, but the traits of somebody with antisocial personality disorder and the traits of somebody with borderline personality disorder, they overlap a lot. Like irresponsibility is a trait of both. Impulsivity is a trait of both. Irritability is a trait of both. And a lot of the reasons for why I did a lot of the things that I did fit more with the reasons why people who have borderline personality disorder behave the way that they behave. I generally wasn't doing things just to do them because I could do them. Sometimes. But generally not. I wasn't generally doing things to gain power or to gain money or something. Again, generally that wasn't the reason. So if I had to make a decision here and look at my own behavior, again, I'm not saying any of it was good. I'm not saying any of it should be put on a pedestal. I'm not saying that you should admire me for even admitting it or anything, but I would say it was because of borderline personality disorder. And I think this kind of highlights the issue of why we can't just self-diagnose, especially when we're not so understanding of all the different kinds of things that are out there and how they manifest. Now, since I have mentioned Shane's documentary and I don't know, I just feel like commenting on this. I know that Katie Morton got a lot of flack for saying that she feels gross and she feels icky when she's around. That would be lightning and thunder. I know that she says that she feels icky and gross around people with antisocial personality disorder, and I think she's correct to say that. I know that not everybody has the same manifestation of the disorder, but she's describing how she's feeling. That's a technical term called countertransference, and it's relevant information for somebody who's a therapist to know how they're feeling and to be able to express that. Maybe not to the therapist, but to be able to understand it so that they can have a better understanding of what they're reacting to, why they're reacting to it, and that actually helps to inform them when they're making an actual diagnosis, which Katie was not making a diagnosis in Shane's video. But I do think, like, if you listen to everything that I listed off, you should feel icky about that. You should feel gross. You should look at me when I say things like that and think, like, that's disgusting. That's an asshole. That's not somebody I want to be in my life. And I think that's correct to say. You know, I want to leave this open-ended. What do you think about everything that I said? Does this change how you see me? Does it give you a better understanding of why I talk about personality disorders and the things that I talk about? What do you have questions about? Leave any of that down below in the comments. I want to hear what you have to say.